some skeptics were convinced that captive bred lions could never be released into the wild. Would the lions be able to fend for themselves? Would their social structures remain intact? Would they be able to successfully hunt? Follow this engaging African story of a few extraordinary people working with extraordinary lions. Known as Alert, this groundbreaking program has one mission. Return Africa's lion population back to its former glory. Coming up in this gripping episode, Kenya and Paza encounter a python. The adorable Dees go on their first bush outing. Lewa and Naili keep the zebra on their toes. The Ngama girls have pretty nasty table manners. The research team have more experiments for the Ngamo lions. The seas take down a wildebeest. Antelope Park welcome VIP guests from Burundi. Kenya and Paza don't give up on zebra. And Milo and Kenge make a hit on the zebra. Lewa and Laili begin their day with a walk. Their spirits are high in the cool winter air. And despite being confident hunters, they are still as playful as ever. L lions focus on a herd of impala and hartebeest and begin planning their approach. this won't be easy at all, and the heart to be streak off. Research team used this opportunity to experiment with playbacks of other lion in order to observe how the pride will react. This morning we're doing um, one of our territorial playbacks. We do it once a month. Um, this is, I think, the first one in a while that we've done in the morning time. Um, it's, this is my first one though, so I'm quite excited actually just to see their reaction. I've heard about them 
and they sound, they've been going well. It should be good because they're all quite lively this morning. They fed two days ago. Today the playback is going to be a group of um, I think one male and four females. So once once the playback starts, I'll start monitoring their reactions. All the cubs are alert when they hear the sounds of unfamiliar lions and Milo leads them off to defend their territory. From when he presses play, yeah. okay, so I would so, say probably maybe like 40, 50 seconds then. Yeah, five was the order first, of actual off. approach, so. Five fire, was the first, Milo was second. Milo. I think Ken gave third. 81 moved on quite, moved off quite quickly, I, I think. think. It was the cubs. Yeah. Okay, I just want to follow and see how far fire's gone. The entire pride walk across the release site in search of the potential intruders. This has been the best reaction I've seen so far in regards to the females and the cubs. But what was the best um, surprise was Wakanaka's involvement being right at the front and then the cubs as well. Being so confident, also being at the front of the group, actually approaching fast pace. She's the perfect example of how this is working. She's developing exactly the same as a wild cub would. And we've just seen the same with the other four. The peas are on their evening walk and it doesn't take long before they have to tread carefully. An African rock python has a bite worse than a dog and is capable of killing smaller lion cubs through constriction. Curiosity could lead to a serious wound. Azza, the ever-curious lioness, gets quite a scare when the python strikes at her. She learns quickly that this is a species to be avoided. Meanwhile, Lewa and Laili are on the prowl and hungry for a kill. Just reading the menu at a glance, wildebeest and zebra are on offer but it's the sight of a young zebra calf gets the L lion's full attention. This blatant direct approach sees the herd scattering with little reward. Another opportunity crops up, but this herd is ruled by Laili's worst enemy, 
the legendary Commando Stallion. Having been rolled over by this stallion a few months back, Laili will have to avoid getting anywhere near him to have a go at the younger zebra. However, nothing ventured, nothing gained, and the lions burst into action. The confident stallion shows no sign of backing down as he blocks off any attempt on his girls and offspring. Perhaps attacking by night will be the only answer to avoid being spotted by the big boy. Over at the Ngama release site, the Ngamo girls have scored, and Kenge is doing the final deed. Cubs patiently wait on the periphery until tempers simmer down. Dominant fire, in particular, has a lot to say. It's been six days since their last kill, and it's evident that the table manners have deteriorated. The pride make the most of the feast before Milo discovers it, and we all know what Milo is capable of consuming in a single sitting. It's a new day for Paza and Peña as they begin their daily outing in the park. After being fed by the volunteers, they still have full bellies and it looks like it will be one of those lethargic days. Yeah, we expected we expected them to be uh, less today because yesterday they do a lot of walking. Also, they were fed this morning, so we expected them to be uh, much less here today. Uh, but uh, they are very unpredictable. These uh, these two lions, uh, they look so energetic. Uh, talking of hunting, they are gaining their confidence with his, each and every walk. Uh, at first they were scared of giraffes and zebras, but since they, they, they brought down all the beasts from then, their confidence uh, started creeping in, as I said, and uh, yeah, they're gaining it on each and every walk. So as they, whenever they're coming across any game, be it a uh, giraffe or any other animal, they are no longer hesitating. They are going for, for, for the kill. You, could, you can see that they are eager now to uh, bring down any animal that they, could, they come across. Yes, their eyes may be too big for their bellies, but it's great to see their confidence going to a new level. The social structure of a pride of lion can be observed through how they address one another, which is clearly demonstrated by the Ngamo lions. The 
Cubs learnt to greet all of the Pride members according to hierarchy. Even if they don't learn the most polite way to lie down next to someone. It's important to note how all Pride members display submissive behaviour to Milo whilst they greet him individually, according to their rank. The cubs are constantly picking up new behaviour from the adults. Not quite as intimidating, but certainly a good effort for a Mahdi. In fact, Amadi, as the only male cub, seems to be spending increasing amounts of time on his own, whilst the young females play endlessly. Amadi's independence is important, as he is already a year old. By the time he's three, he will start to become less welcome in the pride, with the possibility of being ousted by Milo or the mature females. As one cub discovers its independence, the latest additions are just beginning to adjust to their environment and are still very much dependent on a mother figure. Drinking bottled milk is a big highlight for them every few hours. The Dee's first walk in the bush is one of adventure and discovery, as well as getting a bit muddy. This first walk is important as the cubs begin to learn how to be around and interact with humans and learn to adapt to their new pride. Being able to bond now at this early age will ensure safe walks later on. They'll acknowledge the fact that humans are dominant in their social structure. <laughs> Catching up with the Angamo Pride Cubs is always amusing. This play behaviour and mock fighting is great development for their motor skills and only a few months from now could be useful when hunting, particularly ankle tapping.
Trying to take on an adult is a different story, as Kenge knocks Kanisa with ease. Almost on cue, the cubs gang up on the older girls, who have no time for play today. Good, firm bites do the trick to dissuade the cubs. Not too painful, but enough for them to get the message and play in the right age group. The focus of attention in this creche is mainly trees, water and movable objects like the fruits of the Strychnos spinosa tree. have found out that there is still a lot of fun to be had hunting smaller things. Today, they have come across a mongoose, and it's got Peña's attention. But the smaller the object, the harder it is to catch. As agile as the cat is, the mongoose makes a lucky escape. <laughs> Let's see how the elves walk went. We just took two elves out for our for a line walk. We didn't see much. We just came across a uh, jackal and some few impalas. On our way back, just opposite our breeding program, we just uh, saw a water buck uh, which was just standing under the trees, and then the lions spotted it. Laili, in fact, she spotted it. And then she stalked it and got uh, almost about uh, 15 meters away from it while it was still standing. And then it ran away. And then she, she, she didn't chase much. She just ran maybe for about 30 meters to 40 meters and then she, she, she gathered. I don't know, maybe it was too hot for her today, I think. Antelope Park, studies are often done in order to learn more about the lion's instincts. Part of this play enrichment study, the volunteers are testing whether lions are more attracted to red or green. It's a known fact that lions see in black and white, but can they determine the intensity of a colour? Everyone is curious because red is the colour of blood. However, both balls seem to be getting the same amount of attention, and no conclusive evidence can be found. At the release site, Ray and Yvonne are curious to test how the Angamo Pride will react to a different vehicle. So we've come into the release site today um, in another vehicle, a game drive vehicle. We have our researcher Yvonne currently with the female's uh, recent zebra kill. Uh, the plan for me at the moment in this vehicle is to see how Milo reacts. Milo and the whole Pride are completely habituated to the research vehicle. However, this vehicle um, with game drive seats on the back, they're not necessarily used to. We've had a few incidents of Milo giving a few mock charges to other vehicles. I think we're all out of just a bit of anxiety and curiosity rather than full on aggression. Um, but it is something we need to tackle and make sure he especially and the rest of the Pride are used to. 
when the lions are eventually going to be released into bigger areas, there will be game drives, what we hope um, will have quite a lot of tourism revenue coming in from people coming to see these lions. And it's not going to be much help if the lions are running at the vehicles. So the plan is to come, spend about an hour or so in the background with the lions, get them used to the sound and mostly the shape, eventually with people on the back of the vehicle, and hopefully everybody will be happy and fine. They made a zebra kill the early hours yesterday morning. Um, and so in the last session of the day yesterday, um, when, the when the game drive vehicle came in and Milo was sitting with the carcass um, and he was being quite protective of, of the kill then and aggressive with all the other females as they tried to eat. And so when the vehicle arrived, I did think at that point it would be quite interesting to see whether he would, what would be more important to him, whether his food would be more important or whether um, this strange vehicle would be, and he didn't. He he didn't leave the kill. He um, and he didn't approach the vehicle. He merely just looked up and carried on eating. So I don't even think it's I don't think it's anything to do with them being full or hungry. I think um, if they were going to have a negative effect towards it, it would have happened either way. We cross over to the Ls on their afternoon walk to find them highly focused on zebra. Laili and Lewa do their flanking manoeuvre and the uneasy zebra take off. Everyone except the die-hard battle axe stallion. How much longer can this stallion defend his herd for? The elves need to grow up more before zebra become easy to take down. As night falls, the formidable seas are on a night encounter. There's no play tonight, as they seem very intent on hunting. Tourists and volunteers are able to witness these hunts from the safety of vehicles. It's evident that the seas have spotted something, but our infrared lights cannot pick up any movement. With lightning speed, the lions dart off, and by the time we catch up, a wildebeest has met its demise. It may be quite a bloodthirsty display, but for tourists and volunteers, these hunts are rated as one of the most exciting things they have ever seen. To actually see a successful hunt unfold before your very eyes is not for the squeamish. Over to Yvonne, who has another experiment. Today, the playback is going to be a group of five female. The playback's been played from the same side, pretty much in front of breeding programme, which just shows it's not just the area that they're used to hearing them from. They obviously recognise the roars as well. Breeding programme regularly call out to them, and you don't get this response. I think they can differentiate male and female, definitely. This was just a group of five female, and I think just their quick response, the way they, they all rose quickly, even the cubs. I mean, they just sort of stood up and headed straight over to Wakanaka, and it was really them that made the first move rather than any of the adults. They sort of started to move off in their own small group. He's at the back because it's just been some females. There's been no huge threat. He's taken an interest in it because there's females that he doesn't recognise, but there's no actual 
threat to him as a male because there was no other males amongst that roaring. So I think maybe he's just travelled with the group out of interest, but he's not felt threatened. Back at camp, Antelope Park have very important guests to welcome who could potentially contribute in their effort to save the declining African lion population. Representatives of national parks in Burundi have come to see the Stage 2 program in the hope that they have a suitable Stage 3 site. Before getting down to the formalities, they are treated to a warm Zimbabwean welcome. But it is the Ngamo pride they have really come to see. Burundi have sadly no lions left in the whole country. However, they have five protected wildlife areas with plenty of prey species, perfect for a stage three option. Alert are looking to manage and restore these five wildlife areas, and a significant part of that includes the reintroduction of lions from within the rehabilitation and release into the wild program. The delegates are hugely impressed, and a memorandum of agreement is signed. One of their fence national parks will possibly be available for occupancy within a year, and the future of these lions is looking fantastic. The Ngama Pride took a zebra down in the night and with rotund bellies, rest is their best option. Kenisa demonstrates how to keep one's water source close by for drinking and cooling at the same time. Of course, possessive Milo will never leave the carcass unattended and lets everyone know who rules this territory. Enough said. He's back to what he does best, chewing. Amadi, he's our 11-month-old cub. Um, he's the male, and then beside him are Cor and Kanisa. When they were really little and they just started to eat meat, it was it was great to see because he would chase the adults off, but then he would allow his cubs to eat. But as they're getting older, and they're consuming more, um, and as they get bigger and they get closer to adulthood, then they're starting to lose the privileges that they got when they were little ones. You know, there's occasions when Milo, the dominant male, he will come along and he will bat them off the kill. But now, as they're getting older, they're getting a little bit more feisty and braver and they will bash back. And they submit in the end and they'll move away. But they, they are starting to put up a little bit of a fight around food. <coughs> We've just seen here now, um, he's come along, he's chased them off. In the same situation, I've seen the adults run just run straight away and and whereas these two just now they've stood they've held their ground one more so than the other one jumped back slightly the other one didn't move whatsoever and then the second attempt that he went to move them off she even <laughs> mounted on top of the other one to say I'm definitely not moving I'm staying put The rainy season has arrived and energised the pea lions as they size up a herd of zebra. These zebra are well aware of the cub's lack of experience and two of the stallions stay back to take on the lions. are relentless and do not give up that easily as they choose to chase the zebra from all angles. For the guests and volunteers on this walk, it's a wonderful sight to see all this action close up.
the dominant zebra is not budging. Will he be able to teach Penyampaza a lesson? Or could they somehow overpower him? don't have the skills or confidence yet, and interactions like this will probably go on for several more months. The zebra are very adept at differentiating the difference between the walking lions in the park. The older C and MK lions would see these zebra running for their lives. This encounter has reached a stalemate, so we leave this scene to visit the Angama Pride to find the cubs being very active. The cubs are now affectionately called the tree huggers, for good reason. Little Kanyisa scales up the tree with ease as the cubs look on, but Wakanaka is focused on something more interesting in the distance. And it's not long until we see why. The excited researchers find it hard to keep up in the rugged terrain, but catch up just in time to see Fire and Milo in action. As Fire maintains her death hold, Milo is being incredibly useful by keeping the zebra from kicking. These violent kicks can often cause serious damage, and Milo holds on with all his strength. It's difficult to tell which lions kill at night, but interestingly, the researchers haven't recorded fire killing in the daytime for a few years. Was this just a lucky break for fire, or is she a better huntress than everyone assumed? Up until now, most of the daytime kills were made by Kwali, Kenge and Ashanti. Exhausted, Fire releases her hold and leaves the zebra for Milo to make a start. Ever mindful of pesky vultures, Milo drags the zebra to good cover to conceal it from thieving eyes. Milo allows his favorite son, Amadi, to join in on the delicious feast. On a more somber note, here are some facts and figures that may alarm you. Conservation people do not know the most iconic animal in the world is dying. They just do not have a clue. Yeah, we've seen since really around the 70s, 80 to 90 percent continent-wide population decline of lions. Only 30 years ago, there were estimates of over 200,000 lions, and this number is now down to possibly as low as 16,000. If you look at the tiger, for example, uh, there's about 3,000 left approximately. Now, if you wait till there's 3,000 lions left, I believe that's too late. In a lot of African countries, there's no lions at all. Now, a 90% decline from 1975 is very realistic. Kenya, Tanzania are, are, are the hub for lion populations left in Africa now. Even they stand up and say that they are losing lions. Everybody wants to see lions when they come to Africa. If you don't have lions, people aren't going to come. You have lions, people are going to pay to come. Western Central Africa will probably lose all their lions in the next decade or so. I, would, I wouldn't be surprised. And it all comes down to one thing. All the wildlife, everything in the, that's in danger in the world comes down to one problem. Man, we, we are the problem in, in many various different ways, in our greed, and our development, and our growth. Threats such as poaching, hunting, loss of habitat, loss of prey, human-line conflict in terms of retaliation, killings for livestock. The problem's gonna increase persistently to the point where the lion is in the same boat as the rhino. There's, there's enough land to sustain more, more lions than there currently are on the continent. It's not too late. Uh, it's not too late for the lion. Programs like this uh, are there to see the future of the African lion. The main thing, obviously, is lion conservation, getting the numbers back up, finally stopping this continuing decline. And, you know, our plan is, is, is to be able to try and reintroduce lions back 
into some of these countries. Everything about it is like a domino effect. The economy boosts, employment boosts. The only way we can get around Africa is, is, is working with the governments of, of Africa to rebuild their, their, not just their land, but their wildlife population. Uh, the saviour of the wildlife of Africa will be through small uh, organisations such as this. Through our programme, essentially we, we are producing wild lions without actually using wild lions, if you know what I mean. So even if there was nothing left in Africa in terms of wild lions, even if there was nothing there, we would still be able to put wild lions in, in, into an area, the way our programme is designed. But if numbers continue to decline, the way they are doing today, we're, we're going to lose one of the big five. We're not going to have lions around for much longer in Africa. It's useful programs like Alert that will reverse the plight of the African lion. Over the course of just a year, we've documented and witnessed incredible development of all the lions at Antelope Park and the Alert program. We followed the pea lions, Paza and Peña, from their early days of play and investigation to their first major moment of triumph, bringing down a wildebeest. The L lions, Lewa and Laili, shared their journey of discovery and excitement as they continually plotted to outwit the zebra herds. They turned out to be very capable hunters by night and day. The MK lions, already well-established hunters, showed us their fun side, as well as their tactical maneuvers on big game, although Moyo is still lacking the fine art of patience. Never a dull moment with the formidable seas as they took on the likes of big game with chilling consequences. The new arrival of the adorable D cubs sets the platform for hopefully another successful group of walking lions in the future. The Ngamo Pride has given us nothing but pleasure over the year. We captured their tactile nature as they demonstrated the characteristics of social bonding. The energetic cubs took us on a journey of fun and adventure as they took on the world head on. The firstborn cub, Wakanaka, grew into a sub-adult with the greatest of ease and her wild development was of great importance to the alert program and researchers. The Pride were relentless with their hunting skills and are now more than ready for Stage 3. An African Pride destined for greatness. <laughs>